The Mark II Lancer is a standard infantry rifle across COG forces. Best known for its chainsaw bayonet, the design of the rifle tells me that the Lancer was built specifically with close quarters fighting in mind, ideal for blind firing, combat indoors, and urban warfare. The Lancer was put to the test when the Locust crawled up from the depths, having thick, almost reptilian skin, the high rate of fire of 850 rounds per minute, and the chainsaw bayonet were ideal for combating the Locust and giving the edge to the humans who, after E-Day, were teetering on the back foot. So I wanted to take some of my weapon knowledge and take a look at the possibility and reality surrounding the Lancer, and then determine whether or not it could even exist. Creating the Mark II Lancer in real life would have some issues, because while it's a menacing weapon, it is most certainly a weapon that lives best in a world without the real-world constraints that come along with designing a practical, useful firearm. The first issue with the Lancer's weapon would be that, from a practical standpoint, its usefulness is limited due to its lack of a stock. While great for maneuvering the weapon up close, it doesn't provide the user with the ability to shoulder the weapon, and this negatively impacts the accuracy and would waste valuable ammunition in a firefight. I mean, take a look at this footage of a Marine firing an M27 on automatic. Even in bursts with the weapon shouldered, he's having trouble controlling it. So imagine doing the same thing without having it shouldered. So you slap a 5.56 in there or even a slightly larger round with no stock, hold it up to your face and get to get a sight picture and have fun trying to control it because it's going to be challenging. So we're going to take a look at this uh, 3D model of a Lancer that I have here and we're going to take at least a look inside. I didn't do all the interior like uh, the hammer, the bolt carrier group and stuff like that. So you're going to have to use a bit of an imagination but turn off, whoops, not the origin. Let's turn off the uh, canvas and flip it around. Okay. So now that we're looking inside let's zoom in a bit huh Ooh, a little bit and then we'll cut down all right so you can see now this is your magazine this is the interior here's the back part of the mag and here's where your four stacks are around I have it set up for double stacks and you can tell by the follower having this uh, this object right here and the magazines honestly going to be one of the most difficult parts of the rifle and I'm going to show you why. If you, if you come up like this you can see I didn't finish this around and there would be a sprocket right there that would connect to the motor. So the magazine in the center is going to have to be hollow. There, there can't be a front. This would be the front of the rifle but the magazine would stop here so it would be like a big U shape. And you might be thinking oh well that's not so difficult. And you're probably right you can make a U shaped magazine just fine but the, the issue comes in at uh let's bring it back down so you can whoops so you can kind of get a idea of what you're looking at right about here is where your barrel would start and then you have your bolt carrier group that would extend back and beyond that would be a recoil spring and whatnot so when the gun fires the bolt would come back like so till it runs out of energy or cycles as far as it can and the recoil spring will push it back and as it comes back up it will strip around from right here and then on a real gun it just kind of gets funneled up into the chamber well the first problem is actually getting the round from here up into the chamber since this area is hollow uh, it probably could be done but the next issue is how are you gonna when you've expended all the rounds in here probably 10 or 12 rounds in each uh, slot so then the issue becomes well it's got to start stripping rounds from the next uh, next slot in your magazine the next available set of rounds and and that's the difficult part because if the bolt has uh, four different uh, catches to extract the round and strip it from the magazine it's gonna grab one from here and from here and jam before it ever strips them from here and here and the gun will never fire yeah you probably could have a rotating system where first shot it takes one from here and then it rotates and takes one from here and then from here and then from here then to here and you know it just keeps going around like that yeah that probably would work or something close to like what an AR-15 uses to catch the the bolt carrier group when it's uh, run dry which the way that works is this here I'm gonna try to come up a little higher so you can get a really good look this here is what's called a follower and uh, basically it's just there to push the rounds up with the 
just like a platform for the rounds to sit on so they're not directly on the spring and it holds them level. So right back here on an AR-15 or an M16, there's a plastic piece of it that's exposed and, and uh, the mag has like a notch cut out. So when it comes up, it'll push up on the bolt catch, which is slanted on the front. So when the bolt comes back, it just pushes it down. And then when it clears the catch, the catch will pop back up, but the other side's not slanted. So when the bolt tries to come back forwards, it will catch, allowing the user to hit the mag release, drop the mag, slap a new one in, and hit the bolt release. The release works like a lever, pushes the bolt catch down, and since it was just there off of pure mechanical pressure, it was just being held, because now that the magazine wasn't in there to hold it up, it was just mechanical pressure, so it will stay down until the next magazine runs dry. Something like that could, in theory, be set up where once this one runs dry, there's a mechanical catch somewhere attached to the underside of this that releases these rounds and makes them able to be stripped and then somehow this one over here connects to this one that could in theory work but it would make it for a really complicated magazine and the more complicated it gets the more things can go wrong the next issue is going to be fuel and powering your chainsaw see I, I didn't cut out a lot of this a lot of this like this wouldn't be here and then this probably would be trimmed down quite a bit there's no need for that much steel uh, but you can just just picture it use your imagination so your barrels right here and it comes all the way up through here then you have a gas tube which runs your your uh, gas from firing the round back which allows the weapon to cycle right here is where your trigger your sear and your hammer and the spring for it would be so it comes up and hits the fire uh, the firing pin and the recoil spring would go all the way back into here. So there's not a whole lot of area for fuel. Uh, I suppose you could put it in a grip or put like a tiny little fuel tank here. Uh, then you just kind of pipe it into wherever your little motor would be, which would probably be somewhere around here. It's the only place I can think that would have enough power or enough space, like somewhere in the handguard. Uh, even then, it's going to be heavy because then you have to balance having a motor that's robust enough to withstand the heat but then also light enough and thin enough that it won't be terribly heavy and throw off the weapon balance which it already would and then, like i said you just pipe the fuel in probably with some sort of metal fuel lines or high heat plastic or rubber that way the heat from the gun because guns can get cherry red if they're really being run hard um that way it doesn't melt and then cause a fire which in theory it still probably could if um if there was some sort of defect or uh the gun just got hot enough or even if it took a round it could potentially sever the fuel line the barrels already you know extremely hot you could have an issue with the gun just kind of flashing over but you know i'll let that go for now so um the final real big issue that i kind of identified is actually with the chainsaw itself aside from the engine and it's the teeth the teeth um they're long they're hooked and they're they're sharp but they're not very thick now you you probably think oh well that's no big deal um in theory a lot of these teeth could potentially break if they hit something hard or if they uh get caught on something like obviously what it's used for you know get caught on a chunk of bone and the there's an issue with them breaking which means that in order to replace the chain there would have to be some way for the chainsaw to uh, open right here and then open all the way around so there'd have to wait for like this to come off on one side of the weapon and then for the guard up here to come off and the hand guard that covers so I'll just flip it around and show you the hand guard so all this would have to come off this this and this that way the chain can be removed and then a new one can be put in as one single unit that way it's a more sturdy type of chain that's how chainsaws actually do it uh, aside from that the teeth would have to be made out of a very durable substance probably something that, that can withstand a lot of stress and then even then in situations like you see in the game where they're dueling chainsaws it's not going to work like that those teeth would get caught up the chains would lock them together and they'd be out of a rifle until the chains were cut or uh, somehow untangled. So it's fair to say that we could make a functional Lancer you know, with modern engineering and technology. It's possible. Even if it wasn't a fuel-driven chainsaw like in the game and was more of like an electrical one with battery packs, it's possible. I would be concerned that the electric one would have enough power to do what you see in the game, but it is more than likely somewhere in the realm of doable but it probably would be really heavy and not practical so i started to wonder though if the lancer was a reality where would it fall legally and while i couldn't find any laws that specifically forbid anyone from attaching a chainsaw to their weapon i don't think lawmakers ever consider that to be a possibility to be honest with you 
but there are a few laws that would govern the Lancer. Most notably is that civilian models would have to be semi-auto due to laws that restrict fully automatic weapons that are newly manufactured. Being without a stock, the Lancer would technically be considered a pistol, like an AR or AK pistol, which are generally considered useless and are just kind of like a stand-in weapon for someone to own and tinker with until their short barrel rifle permit comes through, which is basically a permit that allows them to have a rifle that's shorter than a certain length that doesn't require a permit. And once that permit comes through, they can just kind of slap a stock on there and it's legal. Those are like really the biggest issues from a legal standpoint that I could personally come up with. Obviously, each state has different rules. Some states ha even have like laws against bayonet lugs. I'm not really entirely sure why, but some states don't particularly care for it. So when it comes to automatic weapons, though, for the military and whatnot, they don't have such laws. They can purchase whatever they want, and they're not really bound to the same laws that civilians are, but that doesn't mean that they have no laws as far as what they can use on somebody. And that's where the Lancer kind of gets stuck in the muck because the Lancer by nature of having a chainsaw bayonet would instantly be considered a war crime because use of it would produce unnecessary suffering to the enemy which is generally the consideration is it uncalled for unnecessary suffering yeah sawing them in half gears of war style or a weapon that promotes that type of use yeah that's probably going to be a little bit too cruel to use because despite the popular saying not all is fair in war to sum it up from an engineering standpoint the lancer is not something that's beyond the realm of possibility sure it would be inaccurate and would have probably the real issue of suffering from potential jams quite frequently because it would have to be a very complex weapon it would also probably in a sustained firefight of using the saw and shooting would become a very hot weapon to carry. The most challenging part would probably be the chainsaw and mainly the engine and getting an engine that's light enough to produce enough power and small enough to produce enough power but then doesn't overheat and that type of thing. Uh, or getting an electric engine that would or it would actually be a motor, an electric motor that could produce enough power to do what you see in years of war. But ultimately, it kind of all begs the question of whether or not this is more effective and efficient than a traditional bayonet. That fact aside, if it's allowed in war, by looks alone, the Lancer would rightfully claim the throne as the scariest weapon to ever be carried on the battlefield. And that type of intimidation is maybe the Lancer's best asset. However, this is all just kind of my opinion and guesswork off of some weapons knowledge. So tell me what you think and until next time, good night.